And I want to thank God for the theme of the year. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kipengele cha mwaka. I want to thank God for his voice over our lives. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya sauti yake juu ya maisha yetu. I want to thank God for his grace. Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya neema yake. And uh, I am glad I am a product of grace. Mimi nina furaha kwa sababu mimi ni matokeo ya neema. And I want to say a few things about the grace of God about that theme about what God is about to do in our life and he is already doing it. Nataka kusema mambo machache kuhusu neema na kile Mungu anafanya na ako tayari anachafanya. And before I read the scripture of the day, kabla nisome maandiko ya leo, I want to begin by telling you a story. Nataka nianze kwa kuambia wewe hadithi. I love reading. Napenda kusoma. And there is a man that is called Thomas Edison. Kuna mtu anaitwa Thomas Edison. Thomas Alva Edison. Thomas Alva Edison. In one of his books that was written by a journalist called Rays. Katika kitabu chake moja ambacho kiliandikwa na mtangazaji anaitwa Elvis Ray. <laughs> Rays uh, yeah. is, is the name of the title of the book is called Obstacle is the Way. Kichwa cha kitabu ni kwamba vizuizi ndio njia. Uh, Thomas Edison uh, narrates his story. Thomas Edison anaeleza hadithi yake. He was a child that was born with deficiencies. Yeye ni mwana alizaliwa na upungufu. He was deaf. Alikuwa kiziwi. He was he had a disease called ADHD, attention deficiency hyperactivity defect. Alikuwa na ugonjwa hiyo amesema ADHD he ADHD. could not settle angeweza kutulia <laughs> and uh, one day he was going to school at the age of 12 alikuwa anaenda shule wakati mmoja kwa umri wa miaka 12 then the teacher gave him a note and told him take this note to your mother mwalimu akampatia kibarua kwamba pelekea barua hii mama yako apparently the mother to edison was also a teacher uzuri pia mama ya Edison, Edison Thomas and uh, that baby took the note to the mother Toto barua hiyo kwa mama. the mother read the note mama alisoma barua. and she cried Na akalia. and the son asked the mother what is in that note Toto mama, Nini barua? and the mother told the son that the teacher has said my son you son are a genius kwamba mwalimu ameeleza kwamba wewe uko na akili nyingi and the mother took over the role of educating edison mentoring edison and you can agree with me he was one of the greatest inventor we've ever had mama in the face kachuku, of the earth mama akachukua majukumu ya kumfundisha na kumuelemisha na mtoto baadaye akuwa mmoja wa watu ambao ni maarufu sana katika ulimwengu among his inventions he invented the microphone telegraph bulbs and many other things katika upa moja ya ubumbusi alivumbua vyombo vizi ambavyo vinawaka na mitu vitu mingine mingi he became very rich akawa mtu tajiri sana then one day siku moja while his mother has passed on mama yake alipokufa he went to look at the things the books the memoirs of his mother and he found that note na akaenda kwa kumbukumbu kutazama maandishi na barua na akapata hiyo kibarua and the note was written we can no longer teach your son we can no longer take care of your son na ile kibarua ilikuwa inaeleza kwamba hatuwezi tena kufundisha mtoto wako we, your son cannot make it in life please stay with him at home mtoto yako hawezi kufanikiwa katika maisha kaa na yeye nyumbani and you can imagine the way the mother read that note and the way she translated those words to speak to Thomas Edison that you are a genius. Tazama vile mama alipochukulia maneno hayo na akaelezea mtoto wake kumwambia kwamba wewe ni mwakili sana. I want us to look at Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17 and 18. Nehemiah mlango wa pili mstari wa 17 na 18. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17 and 18. The Bible says but now I say to them you know full well the tragedy of our city it lies in ruins and its gates are burned let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and rid ourselves of this disgrace verse 18 then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me 
and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, good, let us rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. I want to continue by giving us this morning a word of God about the gracious hand of God. When we relate the story of Edison, with the story of Nehemiah, there are beginnings were not good. But their end was good. And the ingredient of making their end to be good is what we call the gracious hand of God. With his deafness and deficiency, Thomas Edison ended well. Nehemiah with no resources, no people, no influence, no protection, no prospect was able to rebuild the wall until the enemy said, indeed, this is the hand of God. He was just a cup bearer. He was a nobody. He only clinged to his name Nehemiah, which means the Lord comforts. And I want to bring to you the aspect of the gracious hand of God. Our God is very interesting. He is very versatile. You look at Ezekiel 1 verse 10 and Revelation 4, it speaks of the four faces of God. Praise the name of the Lord. God reveals himself as man. He reveals himself as a lion. He reveals himself as an ox. And he reveals himself as an eagle. A man to relate with us. A lion as a king. An ox as a priest. Ox. Bull. Ox. And an eagle as a father. And God has hand, a hand that does several things. The hand gives us grace. The hand executes judgment. The hand forms. The hand protects. The hand satisfies us with good things. The hand of God prevails against oppression. And I want us to focus today on the gracious hand of God. As we move in God's grace, as we desire for increase and growth, there is an invincible hand of God upon our lives. And that hand releases grace. That hand releases favor. That hand releases prosperity. That hand fights the enemy. That hand reveals and, re and removes disgrace. Nehemiah after prayer he looked around the walls were ruined the, they were burnt down there was no gate the city was pathetic they were in disgrace and this man cried and began to pray and he understood that I cannot do this work I cannot obtain whatever I have obtained were it not for the gracious hand of God I have come this morning to make you understand as we are praying for grace, there is so much in grace and there is the hand that is called the gracious hand of God. I want us to look at Ezra 7.6. Ezra 7.9 Ezra 
Ezra 7:28 Ezra 7:28 Ezra 8:18 Ezra 8:22 Ezra 8:22 Ezra 8:22 and Ezra 8:31 na Ezra 8:31 the gracious hand of god has been mentioned six times in those two chapters mkono wa mungu wa neema umetajwa mara sita katika vitabu hizo it has a significant role and impact when we are asking god for grace ezra understood from ezra 7 chapter 7 to Ezra chapter 8 with those verses i've given you he has spoken six times of the gracious hand of god kuna umuhimu tunapotafuta neema kwa sababu katika hizo vitabu Ezra ametacha mara sita mkono wa neema wa Mungu when we celebrate the success of Ezra and the success of Nehemiah we understand that there was something that called the gracious hand of God. Tunaposherekea ushindi wa Ezra na Nehemiah, tunaelewa kwamba kuna kitu inaitwa mkono wa neema wa Mungu. The hand of God can be upon you for good or for evil. Mkono wa Mungu huweza kuwa juu yako kwa mazuri pia na kwa mabaya. Every time as a child of God it is important for you to ask God let your hand be upon me for good and not for evil. Kila wakati ni uombe Mungu kwamba waacha mkono wako uwe juu yangu kwa mazuri because it is the same hand that builds and it is the same hand that destroys it is the same hand that gives life and it is the same hand that kills it is the same hand that blesses and it is the very very same hand that curses it is the same hand that open doors and it is the same same hand that closes doors as we pursue god we need to ask God as we are asking God for grace that God let your gracious hand be upon me. Tunapomtafuta Mungu acha tumuombe kwamba waacha mkono wako wa neema juu iwe juu ya maisha yetu. When you look at the life of Nehemiah. Ninapoangalia maisha ya Nehemiah. He had nothing. Hakuwa na chochote. He was just serving at the king's palace. Yeye tu alikuwa mtumishi katika falme. He understood that grace can take me out from this and position me to be a restorer, a rebuilder and a builder of broken walls in my life. Yeye alielewa kwamba neema inaweza nitoa hapa na inifanye kuwa mtu wa kure jesha kujenga na kuwatengeneza zote ambazo zimeharibika do not look at what you have look at what the hand the gracious hand of god can do with you usiangalie kile kilicho nacho angalie kile mkono wa neema wa mungu inaweza fanya when you walk under the gracious hand of god god has so much that he can deposit in you around you for you and make you a surplus in this generation. Ukitembea chini ya mkono wa neema wa Mungu, Mungu wako na uwezo wa kupeana vyote unavyohitaji ili upupujike hata zaidi katika maisha haya. Nehemiah had traveled a long distance. Nehemiah alitembea safari ndefu. Nehemiah had to rally desperate hopeless people they were there when the walls were being burnt they were there when the gates were being broken you were there when your things were being taken away Amen. you were there when you began to be sick you were there when you were chased outside of your wedlock you were there when you lost it all so nehemiah had a very difficult time Nehemiah to talk to desperate kukumu. people kuongelesha watu ambao walikuwa wamejaa na shida mingi he was to build an impossible wall alikuwa jenga ukuta ambao hauwezekani he was to encourage people who knew god but alikuwa, saw god let them down alio, alikuwa atia watu moyo ambao waliona kwamba mungu aliwaangusha he was supposed to do whatever god has instructed him to do not alone but with many i have come to call all of you today nimekuja kuwaita nyinyi wote who walked up here desperate Watu those who are kumwaka, hopeless kuna, those who feel like it is over those who feel like they have made it i'm making a clarion call this morning that let us come and Joe. walk under the gracious hand of god nimekuja kufanya mwito kwa nyinyi wote ambao walikuwa wamekata tamaa kwamba 
Jo tuipe kwa mkono wa neema wa Mungu. And I want to speak a few things. Ningependa nende mambo machache. About the gracious hand of God. Ju ya mkono wa neema wa Mungu. You look at Thomas Edison. Kimwangalia Thomas Edison. He became successful. Alikuwa alipata mafanikio. Despite being deaf. Licha ya kuwa kiziwi. He was successful despite of having a deficiency of the brain he became successful can you imagine this microphone was made with somebody who has deficiency lights we are using was made with somebody who could not hear somebody who had a deficiency his brain was not complete you know we have the left and the right brain any size of the brain if it is not complete unaka mwenda mwenda bwana asifiwe kichwa ina knock kidogo unakuwa hauelewi can you imagine i want to challenge you wacha nikutie changamoto hii bulb a microphone electrical mingi this man did because he recognized there is an invincible hand of god ukue kiziwi ukue mwenda mwenda ukue kipofu bwana asifiwe ukue mlemavu ukue mweupe ukue mnono ukue mwembamba ukue nini mkono wa neema ya Mungu inaweza kukufikisha mbali Nehemia ambaye alikuwa anapeana chai sasa zingine anaambiwa imepoa sasa zingine anaambiwa majani ni mengi sasa zingine anamwambia ni mrefu sasa zingine kinga anamfanya kenya anafanya Nehemia aliweza toka kupeana chai na akatembea chini ya mkono wa neema akajenga ukuta hadi maadui wakasema hii sio nehemaya hii ni mkono wa Mungu Amen. mwaka huu nataka kukuongelesha ewe mama baba mtoto kijana haijalishi mahali uko tazama kuna neema Mwana asifiwe katika ile bana yetu tunaona Yesu ameshikilia mtu anatembea na yeye. Si kuwa huyo mtu ambaye mkono wa Mungu wa neema inakubeba. Ikuwe ofisini, ikuwe nyumbani, ikuwe kwenye shule, ikuwe kwenye barabara, uwe chini ya ulinzi wa mkono wa nani? Wa Mungu. Praise the name of the Lord. Na hii story, hii sitaki kukufurahisha. These are real issues. The hand, gracious hand of God. Gave Nehemiah favor. May you receive that favor. Pokea hiyo kibali. Mambo ya kufukuzwa iishe. Mambo ya kuchukiwa iishe. Mambo ya kukataliwa iishe. Mambo ya kuanguka anguka paka kuna wimbo inaimba pungulu pangala pangala iishe. Bwana asifiwe. Mambo ya kupoteza vitu ifanye nini? Ishe. Wanesa sifiwe. Mambo ya kukoniwa koniwa ifanye nini? Ishe. Fever ya nani? Ya Mungu. Bali cha Mungu. Whatever Nehemiah put his hand to do prospered. Chochote Nehemiah aliweka mkono wake kufanya kilifanikiwa. Wherever he went, he was favored. Alikuwa na kibali. Praise the name of the Lord. Wacha watu wa kuangalia na macho ya upendo. Bwana asifiwe. Watu wa kuangalia na macho ya kukuita na kukukubali. Watu wa kuangalia na macho mzuri inaitwa nini? Kibali. Bwana asifiwe. Wache kulia kila siku ukiambia Mungu akukumbuke. Ambia Mungu nipe nini? Kibali. Praise the name of the Lord. Mambo ya kuhuzunika mambo ya kukaa umejihurumia mambo ya kukaa umekaa sijuaje iishe hii mwaka hii mwaka mimi niko na furaha kwa sababu ni mwaka ya neema na vile Mungu ako versatile ako na wingi ako na uso mingi ako na mikono kuna mkono inaitwa nini the gracious hand of god mkono wa neema praise the name of the lord another thing the hand of god did to Nehemiah was provisions. Provisions. If you read the book of Nehemiah, the king wrote letters and wherever Nehemiah went, his work was to give a letter 
supplies were given. Na mali inapeanwa. Be it food, be it cats, be it donkeys, be it people, wherever he went, mali alienda. The king's letter barua ya mfalme gave him provision ilipatia kupewa you know when you read the book of nehemiah soma kitabu cha nehemiah you think things were easy unafikiria mambo yalikuwa rahisi nehemiah had to walk nehemiah alikuwa kutembea nehemiah had to pass through forests alipitia mistuni nehemiah had to pass through kingdoms yeye alipita ufalme nehemiah has to pass through gates that were guarded yeye alipita malango yalikuwa yamelindwa there are places where nehemiah needed the letter of the king kuna mahali alihitaji barua ya mfalme and it is the hand of God Nini mkono wa Mungu that write letters ambaye inaandika barua It is the hand of God Nini mkono wa Mungu that seals letters ambaye inaweka mihuri It is the hand of God Nini mkono wa Mungu that introduces you to places ambaye inakutanguliza wewe kwa watu And I want to speak to your life today Ningependa kunena maisha yako leo May you receive all the provisions Baada vyote vinavyohitajika the provisions yote ambaye inahitajika that you need ambao wahitaji The work of Nehemiah was to work with that letter kazi ya Nehemiah ilikuwa kutembea na barua and wherever he reached na mahali alifika when he was told stop alipoombea simama he produces the letter anatoa barua he is given salute anapewa he is given escort anaeshikizwa he is given whatever he needs na anapewa chochote anahitaji that is the grace of god hiyo ni neema ya Mungu it is a gift ni kipawa given to you ambayo umepewa you do not work for it you just present yourself wewe unajitolea in a manner that please is God. And God releases the gift. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Kuna siku hizi kitu inaitwa tibebi shower. Kazi ya mama ni kupata mimba ikuwe kubwa. Karibu kuzaa watu wanatokelezea. Wengine wanaleta pampas, wengine wanaleta nguo, wengine wanaleta sukari. Wanakupa hujawaita, wameamua kufanya nini? Kukupea bure. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa harusi Awambiangi watu bring gifts watu wanafurahi wanasema ametembea ina maana that pleases us mwingine anasema leta washing machine mwingine anaandika vocha mwingine analeta kila aina ya kitu kama vile Kariki alisema walikuja wawili wakaenda na stock mzima ya, nyu, ya nyumba hiyo ndio grace you are given a gift umepewa kipawa bwana asifiwe haleluya Umesoma umegraduate umeita watu graduation party wanakuja wanaamua kukupea nini gift Nehemaya alipewa gift King aliandika kwa hiyo barua chochote Nehemaya anaitisha apewe Bwana asifiwe na Mungu leo ameandika barua Mungu leo ameandika barua Na ni wewe kuchukua hiyo barua na kutembea na hiyo barua na kusema chochote mfalme wangu ameandika ambaye ni Yesu Kristo mimi nitatembea na ibarua ibarua imeandika ninataka kazi upewe kazi unapata Amen. Wana sifiwe ibarua imeandika utaprosper can you imagine the grace of god worked in Nema, the same way it is working in Kenya right now Nema. the walls the gates life is tough Maisha ni magumu. But we need to be Nehemiahs. We need to stand on the king's side. We need to mfane. stand under the gracious hand of God. We need to tell people this story. But now I say to them, you know full well the tragedy of our city. You know very well the tragedy of our nation. It lies in ruins. It gets a band. Let us rebuild the wall of Kenya. Let us rid ourselves of this disgrace. Wacha tuchitolee aibu hii. Praise the name of the Lord. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God was upon me. Pokeeni mkono wa neema. Amen. Tutolee Kenya hii aibu. Amen. Tutolee Kenya hii state mbaya ambayo iko. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to be like Nehemiah. Tutaitaji kuwa kama Nehemiah. Enda kwenu, usiogope kwenu, usitorokwe kwenu, 
usifeke kwenu enda kwenu angalie kuta gani zimebomoka malango gani yamechomeka alafu ujiite mkutano useme let us rebuild because there is a grace Kuna and neema. that grace has been given in the hand of who of God. As we leave church today, walk in the hand of God. The gracious hand of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This hand is able to build an impossible situation again. I go back to Thomas Edison. When he was 67 years old, he has built an empire. He has built successful businesses. He has a large factory. One night in 1914, fire caught the factory. And since it had a lot of chemicals, the fire was so tough, the firefighters could not put it down. His son Charles, Toto wake Charles ran and told him, Daddy, we have lost it all. Yote. Thomas told Charles, go and bring your mother and your siblings. And when they arrived, this is what Thomas Edison said. And I want you to relate with Nehemiah. He looked at his son. He looked at his wife. And children. And he said, We will rebuild Again. We will rebuild again. At 67 years. Here in Kenya at 67 years, Magoti mekata macho ayoni, nyele nyeupe meja, hmm? makucha sayo wa ukati, unakachi ni ya mtu kisikia radio, kichange change channels. Mwana sifiwe, ukikongoja... Nani anapita kwa huko kwa getu na shout mkisalamiana ukimwambia vile ngombe iko sawa hmm? at 67 this man stood and looked at his empire imeungua yote akaambia kijana yake tunajenga tena si Mungu akupende hema ya kujenga tena amen wacha kukimbia mambo ikiharibika wacha kutoroka mambo ikiungua Wacha kuwachana na vitu zikienda sambaratika. Simama hapo. Kama Nehemiah. Kama huyu kipofu na kichwa muenda Thomas Edison. Najua haku ponis ugonjo by the way. Alishi nazo. Lakini alisema, we will build again. Tena. Hii mwaka situ jenge tena. Amen. Situ melia COVID ya kutosha. Siju post COVID, pre COVID, in COVID, waves of COVID. Situ jenge tena. Simama kwa nyumba yako sema nitajenga tena. Simama kwa biashara yako yenye ulifunga 2020 useme nitajenga tena. Bwana sifiwe. Amen. Rudi kwa huduma sema nitaanza tena. Praise the name of the Lord. Kama ulitoroka mtu ako broke ukasema huyu si mooi, mrudie. Umwambie nitakooa tukue tajiri tena. Bwana sifiwe. Jiangalie na useme nitaanza Imagine at 67 years. This man was able to tell his son. Now by the way, Walijenga, a better factory, better businesses, and he retired a successful man. Walijenga, Zuri, Naka, Taya Kiwa Mutu, Kwanikiwa. Mukewake wa Kwanza Akakufa, Akao Atena. Mwana Stephen, Akamzika, Kali Atena, Akao Mungi. Akasema mimi siwezi kaa peke yangu. Akakuwa na mke wa pili. Mbona asifiwe? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Asta anacheka. Hakuzuba akasema sasa sitawaoa. Hapana, this man alikuwa mtu wa kujua ikichomeka ninajenga. Ikiharibika ninaendelea. Ikikufa natafuta ingine. Mbona asifiwe? The gracious hand of who? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
kwanza nakaanga hapo na wewe na kukuongezea handkerchief na kukuambia woye ulia lia unalia unapanguza machozi tena unalia tena narudi na kuongezea na kukumbusha vile chege alisema unalia let me tell you acha nikwambie you need to stand unahitaji kusimama and speak to yourself na ujinene that i will do it again itafanya tena the gracious hand of god the gracious hand of God. It overlooks our steps. It gives us the stamina. It gives us favor. It gives us ability. Unajua mambo mengine hawezi fanya bila neema. Bwana asifiwe. Hawezi fanya bila nini? Neema. Madhara yatakuwa mabaya. Bwana asifiwe. Mambo itaharibika ni vizuri utambue kuna nini neema bana sifiwe na tusichezei neno hii neno lilipiwa gharama hii neno ya neema ilimwagiwa damu hii neno inaitwa neema ilibidi Mungu mwenyewe akuje duniani alale njaa atukanwe araruliwe nguo hmm? watu wa mudhihaki saa zingine akuwe peke yake hii kitu lilipiwa nini gharama sisi kitu ya kuchezea ni mzuri lakini ni ya kutunzwa. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And may this gracious hand of God be evident in your life this year. Kuna zile uonekane. ndoto umekata hautafanya. Bwana asifiwe. Kuna vitu umesema hii rudi. Ile kitu ulisema hii mwaka sifanyi iangalie tena useme nitakujenga tena. Bwana asifiwe. Nitakuinua kama ni wewe mwenyewe you've given up on yourself please receive the gracious hand of god to restore you back to your original and better state okay, neema ya bwana ikurejeshe katika mahali unastahili praise the name of the lord amen bwana asifiwe amen i want to end by saying a few things nataka nimalize kwa kusema mambo machache for you to enjoy ili ufurahie the gracious hand of god mkono wa neema wa mungu You need to recognize waitaji kutambua that the Lord is at work kwamba Bwana ako katika kazi the Lord is the source of whatever you have kwamba Bwana ndio chanzo cha chochote ulichonacho you need to come to a place waitaji kufika mahali like Nehemiah vile kama Nehemiah like Ezra kama Ezra and acknowledge that Now, it is God utambue kwamba ni Mungu any person who enjoys the grace of God acknowledges he is God over his life. Kwamba yeyote ambaye anatambua uwepo wa Mungu, neema ya Mungu ni yeye anayetambua kwamba You need to acknowledge that the Lord is work recognize it is God. Tambua kwamba ni Mungu. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because God does the impossible. Kwa sababu Mungu anafanya yasiyowezekana. Second. Ya pili. You need to pray waitaji kuomba for the gracious hand of god kwa mkono wa neema wa mungu there is no shortcut hakuna ufupi there is no alakadabra hakuna ujanja there is no receive i receive amen hakuna kupokea pokea there is not a type amen you get it hakuna kwamba andika amen upande you need to develop a prayer life lazima uwe na maisha ya maombi ezra and nehemiah ezra na nehemiah recognized walitambua the need mahitaji to humble themselves wenyewe and ask god for his grace kwa neema yake